you ultimately left the show prematurely. No, I got fired. I got fired. It wasn't that I got fired, it was the way it was done. Now, one thing about Kyle Barker, mm -hmm. the character, again, I think he presented himself as a studious type gentleman, very smooth, very suave. And were you conscious of that representation? Absolutely. Absolutely. Kyle is a combination of a few friends of mine and my dad. Um, doctor, a friend of mine, a lawyer, a friend of mine, a social worker, a friend of mine, and my father. I pulled from all those people to create who he was. I thought it was very important for us to see a young black man that was successful in his business, mm -hmm. that was very connected to his heritage and his culture, that treated women a certain way, mm -hmm. and that treat, and treated his friends and his family a certain way. And I, I, I hope that that came off through that character. Very much so. Very much so. What was going on uh, in terms of, was there any, let me, let me phrase it this way. We spoke to John Hinton. Mm -hmm. He spoke about that there were certain things they were trying to have you guys do. Oh yeah, yeah. They wanted us to be Lenny and Squiggy. Really? Okay. Oh yeah. And at one point, I forgot what we were doing, but we both just looked at each other and said, we can't do this like this. And we basically went to them and said, look, we know what you're trying to do, but you cannot put two buffoonish men against four strong women. Two buffoonish black men against four strong black women. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to think about it differently. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, they did. Yeah. They took, it took them a while to kind of realize that you guys are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we... In the beginning, we were just following orders. You know, we doing what they tell us to do. Right. But then we started looking at it and we were like, mm. Is this that stuff is already going out? Yeah. Like the so you're watching the show at home and just like. Yeah. And the first couple of episodes, we were like, mm. And then that stuff started coming in. Once we, once we realized we did have a voice, that we could say what we needed to say about it, then, you know, things started to change um, one thing I do um, I will never regret is speaking my mind about how I felt about what they were asking us to do and I think a lot of that shaped who Kyle was yeah I think you know with you guys being kind of pioneers in terms of that era the 90s and what our representation was at that time it definitely probably set a tone from the shows that we see now to let them know that hey because if anything someone can always say like hey a brother like Kyle Barker can exist and he can be liked and he can be appreciated so now I don't have to rely on the buffoonery that we've seen over the years right so it just at least I can say no but it can be done this way right and I think that's an, uh, a credit to what you brought to that character on screen one thing about Kyle Barker he was definitely a ladies man so who were you pulling from in that? Was that dad in terms of the suaveness? Was that you? <laughs> it's a little bit of me, a little bit of okay. me, a little bit of my dad. My, um, Smitty was always cool. I mean, my dad was one of the coolest people around. He just had a way of walking. He had a way of talking. He never left the house without a hat on, which is why Kyle always had a hat on when he left the house. Mm -hmm. He never left the house without a hat on. He was always immaculately groomed mm -hmm. you know he always looked good um always smelled good mm -hmm. you know so yeah that was a lot of that was him and i learned that just growing up like um miss annie did not let you go out the house unless you were put together mm -hmm. so there was no wrinkling there was no wrinkled shirts no pants without creases no unwashed face no uncombed hair you know you before you leave the house you make sure you look presentable Right. No matter where you're going. Yeah. It was definitely, um, again, the way he, the character carried himself was just like, it was just smooth. It was just smooth. Like, <laughs> like it's nothing way around it, you know? And I also think it's a, it was a way to illustrate how to talk to women 
in a way that's respectful, but still sensual, still uh, uh, flirty. Yeah. But it's respectful. And I think we've lost so much of that right now. You know, everything is so base. Yeah. But it's kind of interesting. Like, do you think that character in terms of today's energy could could exist now? Because everything's like you said, um, women tend to be OK with you being kind of direct and the chivalry, if you will, is kind of it's kind of dead. Yeah. Um, well, I, you know, I've heard women talk about it and they want it, but they don't ask for it. They accept what they get. Because if women said no, brothers would step up. You know, they would. But when everybody's accepting what this is, then there's no really where to go. Yeah. You know? Um, upon my research, which I thought was interesting when we were preparing. You've been doing a lot of research, haven't you? This is, no, no. No, no, no. But upon kind of research, I was surprised that, and I never thought about it, but you ultimately left the show prematurely. No, I got fired. I got fired. Um, we had a lot of, and I won't say a lot, but there were times when we had issues on the show and we would come to them as a cast, but I would be the spokesperson for it. And so that last season before I left, um, they called me in and they basically said, well, you know, all these problems that, you know, we've been having, they listen to you. Mm. You're the person they listen to. So if you said something else, then they would do that. And I kind of looked at them. I said, well, first of all, we're dealing with five grown people mm -hmm. and they have their own mindset and their own ideas about what we're doing. And everything we come to you with is a group decision, not my decision. But if you think I have that much power, then I need to have a different job. Mm -hmm. I need to have a different job. And I don't think they like that. Was the issue consistent? What would we No, there consistent? were different, a lot of different issues. You know, sometimes it was script. Sometimes it was, it was um, the way we were being treated. Uh, it was just various things that happened through the course of the, the seasons, yeah. you know, and when we had issues, we talked to them about it. I think part of it is, um, even now, if you're African American, you shut your mouth and do the job. Yeah. Don't ask questions. Be happy. Be happy that you got a job. And my whole time on living single, I was happy I had a job, but I understood the importance of the job I had. I understood the importance of what these characters meant to my community. And so when I come to you with a problem, it's because of that, not because of ego. And they looked at it as ego. So that season I was at home watching the final, and I asked them because they sent me off in the episode, they were sending me off to London. And I said, so are you getting ready to fire me? Mm. I just need to know so I can line up my stuff and so I can be prepared. They're like, no, we never break up the group. No, we wouldn't do that. Watching the episode, episode goes off. Not two minutes later, my phone rings. And it's my lawyer telling me that they're not going to bring me back next year. And it wasn't that I got fired. It was the way it was done. Right. In hearing you in terms of, I was trying to wrap it into a theme what you might have been experiencing with the production. It just seemed like you guys were fighting for a level of respect. In a lot of ways, yeah. The quality, the script. Artistically. How you would be treated on set. It just seemed like, hey, we know that we should be treated at a certain level. Well, we were getting less than. We were getting less than all the way around. And then they created friends and gave them everything. And both shows were Warner Brothers shows on Warner Brothers lots. Yeah. You know, so to watch that, to be on our lot and to watch that was really kind of a slap in the face. 